Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Church of Our Savior. My name is Carl Burns, rector here at Church of Our Savior. Let's just take a moment and take a deep breath and uh, prepare our hearts and our minds by breathing in the Spirit. Surely the Lord is coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now and in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility. In the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 80. Uh, we will say verses 1 through 7. Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine, that we might be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and give them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we might be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this morning, as we start this new sermon series on the great carols of Christmas, and looking at what they're saying, and, the, and how we get them, uh, the lyrics from Scripture, and theologically the, the depth of meaning, um, this morning we're going to take a look at uh, the, the, uh, the great Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which takes us to our reading, which is Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. The prophet writes, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, a branch from his roots shall bear fruit, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fatted calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the wean child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Well, as we look at this first Sunday of Advent, and as we come to sing that traditional song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, um, a little background on this hymn. Um, it's probably uh, very easily one of the oldest hymns that we have, uh, definitely one of the oldest Christmas carols that we have, or, or Advent hymns, if you will. Um, the, the refrain uh, that we have in this song that's repeated after every verse um, to, to, uh, to, for, for Jesus to, to come, um, to rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel uh, shall come to you, O Israel. That refrain goes back to the 700s as, as a Latin chant in monasteries. We see the melody in France in the mid-1400s, and in 1851, a Church of England, Anglican priest by the name of John Mason Neal, uh, put it in English form and in meter uh, so that it could be sung in Church of England churches. And it's been in our prayer book and the Methodist prayer books and other liturgical prayer books uh, or, or hymn books uh, for a very long, long time. Um, the main theme of this hymn uh, we get from the scriptures. In, in Isaiah 7, 14, uh, we hear the prophecy that the child shall be called Emmanuel. And then we, we see again in Luke, where the child is to be called Emmanuel, which of course means God is with us. And that's the theme of this entire hymn. And as we look at the scriptures, as we look at the creation of, of the Garden of Eden, as we, look to, uh, as we look to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, as we look to the Exodus and to Moses, and as we look uh, to the time of the judges, to the time of kings, to the prophets, to the second exile into Persia, to the birth of Jesus, we see time and time again this theme, that God is has been and is and will be with us. He will not desert us. And of course, at this time of year, we rejoice at the fact that God became flesh incarnate so that he could indeed be with us in perfect human form. Perfect God, perfect human. But we also need to remember that the part of this hymn is also that Jesus will return. And, and so we remember and rejoice, but we also must prepare and rejoice. And as we look at this hymn, each stanza is a major theme of messianic prophecy. And as you go through it, we see the, the power, the might, the majesty, the judgment, um, the, the final culmination, the reconciliation, it's all there in this hymn. A another way to look at this hymn is that each stanza of this hymn is actually a prayer to Jesus. And, and it begins, each stanza begins with, O come, uh, inviting Jesus in as, as this prayer is being uh, said. Um, and then the refrain itself, the refrain of rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel, is an answer to that prayer. This hymn is also all about the eschaton, um, the not yetness, if you will, the already but not yet. It anticipates Jesus' birth, that fact, and his return. And as Israel in Isaiah is awaiting the Messiah, we are awaiting Jesus' return. The church is awaiting the return of our King um, to set all things right. And so as we look at this hymn, we realize that what it is actually is a running commentary on what I just read, chapter 11 out of Isaiah. I just want to point out a few things about this. The first thing we see about, uh, about uh, this hymn and in uh, juxtaposition with chapter 11 is the first thing this is all about is exile. Um, if, if we look at the scriptures, and actually before chapter 11, we read in, chap in chapter 10, verses 33 and 34, that the Lord God of hosts has lopped the boughs with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down and the lofty will be brought low. He cut down the thickets of the forest with an ax, and Lebanon will fall by the majestic one. God has um, created uh, the stumps that we read about, uh, the stump of Jesse in verse 1. Um, but he, what's talking about here is exile. You know, God uses exile 
um, when the people have turned from him, he banishes them from his presence, um, the, the holy land that he's got set aside. Um, it, God still is there. Uh, God still is there, but he says, no, you need to be pruned. You need to walk uh, a, a sanctified path. Um, and so God does these exiles. But now we see in, in chapter 11, verse 1, that he has cut these stumps. He has had this exile happen, but he is there. He is there. The presence of the Lord is there because there will come from a shoot, from the stump of Jesse, a branch, and from its roots will bear much fruit. Notice it doesn't talk about from the line of David. It starts with the humblest. We don't know much about Jesse other than he was a shepherd and he had lots of sons and one of them would go on to be King David. It's a very humble man, a very humble story. And this is how Isaiah has been told by God to prophesy about the coming. It will be in the most humblest of situations will Christ be born into. Now that contrast with uh, the, the glorified way in which Christ will return. We know he will return from the east. We know he will return to Jerusalem. We know he will come with a great cloud of witnesses. And it will be undeniable what will happen. And so we have this contrast. The, the, the first, the incarnation is very humble. The return will not be so. We see the indwelling spirit here too uh, in Isaiah. In, in verse 2, we actually see this sevenfold indwelling of uh, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, it's all there. This is full, the number seven is fullness. All that God has through his Holy Spirit is in Jesus. There are no boundaries in Jesus. There are no, um, there are no if, if you just do this for me, there's none of that. There is this complete surrender. And we hear this in the Garden of Gethsemane from Jesus. Lord, not my will be done, but yours. And he accepts the will of the Father um, being obedient, as Paul writes the Philippians, to death, to death upon the cross, um, because the Spirit is at work fully in Jesus to do the will of the Father, and he has wisdom, and he has understanding, and counsel, and might, and knowledge, and all of these things that God gives through his Spirit to Jesus are needed, because the next thing we see in verse 3 and 4 is the judgment that is to come in that second coming. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. No, Jesus is going to look into the heart, the heart of each and every one of us. And he will righteously judge the poor. Notice it doesn't say he will righteously judge the rich. This is meant for encouragement for the meek. I, I, we, we hear this in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor in spirit. These are the people whom Jesus has a heart for. And we all have been there. We have all been poor in spirit. We have all been meek. We have all been humbled. We have all uh, needed that love of Christ. And so we take great, um, it, it gives me great peace to know that evil will be dealt with and, and that the meek will be lifted up because Jesus is not going to judge on outward appearance, but on the heart itself. And he will judge with equity. And he will judge, and the wicked will be set out. So there is judgment. And then what happens after that? We see the world reconciled. We hear uh, in, in this, this larger section, in verses 5 through 9, we hear about not just humanity being reconciled to God, but creation. And what does that look like? There is no enmity between animals. There's no enmity between man and animals. It is return to the Garden of Eden where there is no fear. Verse 9 says, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So you see, the whole world will be recognized when Jesus returns. Brothers and sisters, we're spending a lot of time, I know, preparing to celebrate the birth an event that has happened. But what about preparing for the event that will happen? That great cosmic event of Jesus returning. Are you anticipation of that? Do you have as much joy about that as you do about 
the Christmas season itself and all of its trappings of shopping and greeting cards and decorations and food. And all those are wonderful things. But Advent is a time to remember. It's just not about rejoicing about what has happened, but also rejoicing and preparing about what will happen. The entire earth will be reconciled to God. And because of that, we can rejoice. This is a time of rejoicing. Um, verse 10, which was not in the reading, says this, In that day the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for all the peoples of him, shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. The nations will come to him, and that will be a time of worship and rejoicing. We read about that last week when we talked about Christ the King. This is a time of rejoicing. When Jesus returns, there will be a great amount of rejoicing. And brothers and sisters, I hope you're in anticipation and in preparation for that time. Paul writes to the Philippians, and again, he's writing to them about the knowledge of Christ now, but he's also writing to us about the knowledge of Christ's return. In Philippians 4, 4 through 6 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Boy, are those great words for us. Advent 2020 into Christmas of 2020. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, let us rejoice. Let us not be like the world and, and rejoice in things. And, and um, as, as Spurgeon says, let us not rejoice uh, in the creature, but in the creator. Advent calls us, as this song does, to remember and rejoice, as well as to prepare and rejoice. So let us rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Amen. Let us now reaffirm that faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we say, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And here is the Advent part of this. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Together let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you would now join me in intercessory prayer. Lord, we pray for the whole world 
for the well-being and the unity of the people of God. We pray for our Archbishop Foley, for our Bishop Mark, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and her congregations. We pray for all who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, we pray. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, Lord, have mercy upon them. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need sickness, or any other adversity, and please, brothers and sisters, take this time to lift up those who need prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, and in thanksgiving, let us pray. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Amen. As we prepare our table this morning, um, again, a, a word of, of thanks for all those who helped in feeding of the multitude. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a great success, but was only done because uh, there were many hands and feet like yours that were involved. Um, we're very thankful for that. Please go um, to our website um, and know that you can support us um, and you can find out there how to donate. If you, if you would like uh, to drop a check by the church, you can certainly do that. Um, or you can go online and click donate. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world. We may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest... He ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of you. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. 
Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. If you would take your communion cups and peel back the bread section, and together we can say, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And if you'll take your communion cups and on the wine section, peel back that top. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Together, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hope you have a happy and glorious Sunday.